Hey guys, how's it going? I'm gonna uh, spend some more time on the Virago. I want to see if I can get the uh, carbs done and button up everything but the gas tank and the sub tank. So one thing I was waiting on was gaskets for the float balls. And uh, there they are, they came in today. Two of them were, che uh, four of them were cheaper than two. So I have four, so now I have spares. And the problem with the one that's in there is it's broke right here and it was kind of like bent in. I tried pushing it back into place and tightening it down, but it, I have a feeling it just kind of popped it right back in again. So I'm not sure if it's showing up. You can kind of see how the bottom of that bowl is like wet, damp right here. So it's leaking right roughly in that area. So I got to pop them out one more time. Someone commented that they think the float was too high if it's leaking out the bowl. Uh, I'll check them when I have it off. I actually think it's okay. I think it's just literally missing that section of gasket there that is causing my issue. And uh, other things I need is a battery. And that battery took somewhat of a charge, but not a great charge. And that battery has got to be five years old, six years old, and it sat dead. And when they sit dead, they don't have a very good uh, recovery rate. They have a, a tendency to... Uh, what do they call that? Sulf uh, sulfurized? No, that's not right. Um, the plates get all kind of um, uh, uh, corroded internally and, and sulfate. That might be it. And you can actually kind of look right there. You can see where that one's whiter than the rest of them. So you can kind of tell those plates are kind of compromised on the inside of it. So um, I have a feeling that battery is not going to recover. So what I have for a replacement is the scrapyard. Uh, I think I talked on one of the other videos. They get a place that drops off batteries and they have to change the battery due to the date, not due to the condition of the battery. So this is one of them. Uh, this is a SP1218 and uh, it's kind of the same uh, almost class as this one. Uh, this is a 20 amp hour battery. This is an 18 hour. Uh, amp battery. <laughs> I screwed that all up. Anyway, this is a deep cycle battery. It was probably in some kind of test equipment and um, or backup equipment and they changed them out. I think that's what he said, medical. Well, I just ordered a new one of these for my jumper pack and it was uh, about 30 something dollars delivered because that one was getting weak and I couldn't find a better jumper pack. And I just so happened the next day, went down the scrapyard and saw the exact same battery. I said, you know, if that's good enough to run a jumper pack to jumpstart the bike, it should be good enough for the bike. And as far as physical uh, appearance, it looks like it's just a hair taller, so it should fit that way. And it is a hair shorter. So that's the difference in it, about a half inch. Width, I believe is the same. Width is a little skinnier, so so again, that's a deep cycle battery. That is not a deep cycle battery. So this will uh, probably take to going down to zero much more than uh, than you know obviously that one did. So we'll see how that makes out for us. Oh, that was uh, seven dollars by the way, and I uh, probably got a dollar core gas tank. I got a gas tank change in position over here with the sealer in it. I'm not sure what we're going to do without light. Can you see in there? So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of moving it. I've been moving it around and getting the sealer to kind of flow all into the nooks and crannies. And I still have to do the little tank. So I'm going to drain that one out very shortly and do the little sub tank next. So I'm gonna let all that kind of run out. I'm gonna swish it around and try to get the best um, amount of the excess out of there. Whatever is stuck is stuck. It's not like you're trying to make a quarter inch wall. You're just trying to make a, a, a coating all the way around. If you had holes, eh, maybe, maybe if you have holes, you, you kind of want to try to bridge, but this doesn't have any. So I'm going to try to get as much as I can out of it and then after I'm done I'm going to keep rotating the tank so that um, the stuff is whatever didn't come out of the tank still kind of rolls around 
And I gotta make sure once in a while I gotta come back after I pull these and I gotta blow them with air and make sure these two passages stay clear on the inside. Sometimes you could jam something up inside them when it's still kind of curing like a clothes hanger or a drill bit, depending on whether it's a straight shot or not. And uh, you kind of get it out of your way, but you gotta make sure you got that passage open. Because like this one, they gotta kind of go up in the tank and bend down around somewhere. And <laughs> I can't have them tall with fuel. It's not like a regular tank with just a pedcock in the bottom of it. <laughs> if this puts up too much of a fight, that's what it's going to get. But anyway, so blow those passages out. And uh, this has a, a lip about that deep in the top. That's why I couldn't pour it back out from the cap. That lip doesn't allow you when you flip it over to get any material out. But it's meant to maintain a, uh, a vapor um, space. So you fill the tank up, it, it clicks off. But meanwhile, there's still that much air in the top of the tank. So that kind of makes for a bitch for cleaning up. And I'll hit that with a uh, wire wheel, the little lip right here, and uh, the cap I'll take care of when that's off. But I'll clean that back up later and we'll just coat that with a uh, troium kind of deal. So, this started out as a, I think it's a one quart can. Yeah, a one quart can. And it's probably done. I have about five, four or five tanks already. I think it's a. I think it's meant for like a. You could do up to a, a marine, a marine, a, or a mo automotive gas tank, like an 18 gallon tank. So when you use it on the little tanks, you re you recoup uh, so much of it that it doesn't. Um, it goes pretty far, you know. So it might be 20, 30 bucks for the for the core, but it, it does uh, a lot of them. I forget what this one is. I already transferred it into another. Uh, uh, glass jar or I'll give you the information on that. All right, so I'm gonna let that drip. And I figured I'd show the carbs uh, midway getting removed. So, just going around the outside, I took the choke cable off of this side, uh, throttle cable rather, off of this side, and that just came off with one screw on this bracket. The whole thing will come away. You can take the bracket off of the um, cable, and then just uh, I just put it back together up here so I know where it goes. The intakes have two screws on them. Top one has uh, got a slot in it, so if you just crack it loose, it'll slide out. And the bottom one is uh, bolted through. So you gotta kinda unbolt it, pull it away a little bit, unbolt it a little bit further, because this clamp is fixed on it, and that clamp is opened up all the way. Same on the other side. We got a throttle cable on this side. And that was just mounted right the other bracket screwed back on it. Vacuum hose off each side, vacuum hose off of the, uh, the intake on this side. And then the fuel line is disconnected. Originally it had a, a braid that held the center of it. I'm going to omit that one so that I can get in there and put hose clamps on and change hose out in the future. If not, the way it was tucked inside there, that thing was right on the knuckle with a special kind of clamp that I don't have. Um, so anyway, that one's going to be omitted. I'm going to put a regular hose clamp for uh, future access. And the whole reason why I'm doing it this way, this you can see this one's uh, cracked half or loose too, is you can't get the unit out uh, by unbolting them or you can't get the unit out uh, by not unbolting them and popping them out of the socket. So you got to kind of get them loose. I used a, a big ass pry bar uh, between the screw and this case right here and just kind of worked it, went over the other side, worked the other side and, and pushed them off and now they kind of wiggle around inside there but you're not gonna be able to get it out of that pocket so now you got to continue taking these screws out and now you get the room to do so and uh, you got to wiggle those intakes i know i'm not gonna be able to do this on film let's see left handed no less no the top one's still too tight anyway so i'll get those out of there once those are out of there then the two carbs will come out they are put together as a uh, again a single assembly so they gotta come out together. And through the magic of video, we just poof, loosened up that screw. That one's out and then we'll get the same out on the other side. There's the slot. There it's fixed. Just wanted to show what was wrong inside the carburetors where they were leaking. So as you can see, that one right there, it is 
broken off kind of right here and pushed back together. I was trying to tweak it back into place and tighten the bowl down, but you can see I missed how you could see uh, daylight behind the gasket. So that's right where it was kind of, it was tweaking out right there. So the new ones will take care of that. So I'm going to go and disassemble them. Uh, one's marked with a red magic marker. All that stuff will go on that side and all the other will go on the other side because you, you end up flipping around back and forth and you're like, wait a minute, what was on which one? Not that it should matter, but uh, I like to keep it uh, in order. So that's it. I'm going to go just do everything all over again. Blow out all my air jets, um, run a car cleaner through them all, reassemble them, and put new gaskets on them. And then we can put it back together. So I was taking it apart, and um, I'm going to show one of my boo-boos, if you will. You notice the end of the float is kind of it's ground away. I did that with the wire wheel. Uh, these were heavily corroded at the time. You still see some corrosion on there. And uh, I figured probably that material was harder than it really is. It's kind of like a, a closed cell foam where I thought it was more of a plastic. And uh, what closed cell means is that the little air pockets uh, do not uh, link across to each other inside. So each pocket is its own little capsule. So it, it won't wick up material, uh, fuel. It's kind of true in anything. It's closed cell and open cell. Uh, they can't transfer from one pore to the other, probably the best way to put it. But I, I, I soaked them in the... Uh, cleaning solution and they seem like they float just fine so I'm still gonna go ahead with it and I was just checking the uh, the float levels one is a little uh, generally when you take a carb and you flip it over and this is just a general rule you want the floats almost to be like level with the base of the carb when it when it's closed sometimes you have a roll pin you put in sometimes you have a scale you kind of measure it but I'm looking at the difference between the two of these one of these uh, has uh, it set up where it kind of hangs out a little further than the other and that will make the float level a little bit lower than the other one and I think I'm going to match the other one the same way to make the float level a little lower because I am just shy of uh, some float material so maybe my way of trying to compensate but uh, I don't think that was the, the issue in the first place but we did talk about if the floats off it could also cause the carb to overflow its bowl so that may be the issue also. Anyway, onward. So they're back on with the new gaskets. There's the uh, condition of the other one that was on the other side too. So, um, one thing I like to do before I put it, uh, a carb back in, pretty much anything, if I have it off, is I, I just like to blow into the fuel inlet. You can see I got them separated right here. And with the carbs upside down, both valves should be open. You should be able to blow fuel on it. And you flip it over, you want to make sure both of them shut all the way, that you still can't blow through it that the needles are uh, sticking and if you're if you find that it's um kind of intermittent and take it apart your, your needle and uh, seat are not touching very well or you're not slipping your floats or uh, rubbing on the housing of the bowl or gasket or whatnot so that's taken care of on this one and they seem to operate fine so now I'm gonna go squeeze all that assembly back in its little cave where it came from all right so it should go I got the other battery on it, and we got to prime it a couple of times. Eventually, that clicking should stop. Getting close. No choke, see what happens. let her warm up and see how she makes out. So it's been running about 10 minutes or so and uh, had to go tweak. I had one of the vacuum lines off on the 
front cylinder, so it wasn't coming in at an idle. Put that back on, came right back, and just play with the balance a little bit. Again, just feeling the pulses of the two of them, and see that feeling the kind of even, that not one cylinder is popping more, or one cylinder is popping. If the cylinder is popping, is the cylinder that needs to be added is more throttle too. It's getting pulled by the other side. They sound pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Uh, the battery actually works fine too. It doesn't have any uh, uh, drag trying to crank it over. So now I'm gonna go put the elbows back on and try to put the intake system somewhat together so that I have the correct drag on the intake and I'll try to fine tune them and uh, see if we can get some gauges out and maybe uh, try syncing them with those. Back at the tank, got about um, a little more than half came back this time and what I'm doing is I'm positioning the tank so that it can kind of pull on the bottom section down here and then I'm trying to capture it back by draining it out of there. I'm going to do that one or two more times, uh, move it around and try to get the, the fluids to come out and then I'm going to blow it out with um, air through the passages and uh, clean, just clean up the lips and stuff while it's still soft and uh, we're just going to let that cure and then we'll move on to the, the other little tank. Alright, so I'm kind of hooked up with a, a set of a uh, Mercury gauges. Essentially it's a very heavy metal which makes pulling a vacuum uh, fairly accurate. It tries, as they draw up that tube, it shows you how many so-called inches of mercury you're pulling. And you're just trying to balance out the two and there's other things you could do too. You could read if it's pulsing, if it's doing this, doing that. But for the intended purpose right now, we're gonna look to make sure that um, at an idle, I'm trying to favor both cylinders pulling the same amount of that, um, volume through them, essentially. So, it's cold. Let's see what we get. You gotta watch you don't rev it too much too because you'll suck it right up. I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. I'll turn you back on. So you can kind of hear it. You hear it pulling one of the cylinders. So here we are on the gauges. That's the difference we're having between the two of them. And I can adjust between the two throttles where their position is so I can try to even that out so both cylinders are working evenly. Tucked in the middle, hoping I can get it with that boot on there. Let's rev it up first. So you see one's pulling harder than the other. see it's still favoring that one cylinder all the time so hopefully that all that will kind of come together once I tweak them. When you let off the throttle don't dump the throttle that's when it'll suck the mercury right up. Roll it back slowly. So that's the screw right there I got to adjust.
So, I evened them out from side to side. I'm gonna lose my battery in one second. New battery. So, where was I? The idle, you can kind of see where they're, they're, you could hear it when it was coming together. They were both sounding like they were pulling evenly. And then um, the RPM started coming up as the motor was you know, working in conjunction with each other. And you saw me come over, turn the idle back down again. Then I revved it up. I wanted to see what I did up in the higher registers. And it was decent. They kind of separated a little bit, but uh, that would be more on the main jetting and, and uh, just a bunch of tweaking. Um, it's good enough for me for right now. Uh, I'm going to continue just putting it together. If I have to revisit it, I will. But uh, I think it's. Uh, should be fine. It needs to really kind of be taken out and just kind of, you know, run to. And I bet uh, a final once over in tuning would uh, really dial it in. So what am I going to do next? I don't know. So it's all buttoned up. Took those back off of there. No wet float bowl. That's good. And now we can do a cold start on it again. Uh, and that's pretty much I think we're going to stop on this because I still have the gas tanks to do and uh, they have to go in there and then the battery goes in and that kind of thing and the uh, top tank goes on after that tank's on there. So I'm going to take it out and pressure wash it, knock all the crap off the, the insides. Well, I got it nice and open like this. Let's see what we get. one popping just a little bit so I may work with the uh, the air fuel mix on the bottom of them but again I want to run it and because I know everything's gonna move around just a hair on the adjustments but it sounds good it sounds like uh, uh, they're playing well together so let me go back to the gas tank so I'll let that drain whatever I can kind of get out of it and uh, it looks pretty good down in there as far as everything is covered and I just want to make sure I just took the two plugs out the ass end of the tank, you can kind of see how it's intruded a little bit, but that one's so large it wouldn't be an issue, but the, the smaller one that can really clog up, so I'm just going to make sure that air can blow through these guys, that there's no blockage on those. And that's going to be pretty much it, that's a good spot for whatever is extra to kind of settle and gives it a large area to, to, uh, to pool and harden up so it won't be that thick, you know what I mean? If, it, if, you, had, if you had a puddle that was real deep in one spot that you stood the tank on in, it'd take a while for that to cure. So I'm just gonna go take these two screws back out, I'm gonna go clean this up, and uh, I'm gonna work on the, uh, the other tank, we'll fill that one. So that's it. I used um, PB Blaster. I don't know, rag, you know, kind of works off the, uh, the stuff on the outside pretty good and let it, uh, we spongify there's actually an o-ring going around right here see how that seals up and the other tank is filled and rotated in you know kind of gonna go over every 10 minutes kind of move it around and then uh, we're gonna dump that out and I think that's about the end of it that stuff's starting to get pretty thick it was uh, skinned over again within an hour the top was all uh, heavy and crusty which is supposed to do in the tank anyway but uh, the the most of it's getting uh, the viscosity of it's getting thicker throughout yeah that's it <laughs> so that's where i'm going to end off the thing is uh ready to kind of ride once it get, gets its fuel situation tank wise uh straightened out and uh battery tucked in and some shrink wrapping and that kind of stuff like i still gotta adjust that front valve again when it's cold that's still not done that's it so i'll probably make another video of it but uh again thanks everybody for watching comment subscribing see ya